I'm Safi Russell from SDR Consulting Inc. And we're here today on Business Basics Friday. Uh, the goal of this session is to provide some value to small business owners in the space of tax accounting and general business, and then have an open Q&A at the end. Hey everyone, happy Friday to you all. Hope all is well with you and you had a great week. Welcome to my training session today where I'll be discussing how to decrease your tax liability with my three-step entity analysis. I'm dialing in today from New York. It is May 12th. Um, let me know what area you are joining in from, whether you're here live or catching this on the replay. Let us know what state you're joining in from and what the temperature is like there today. Um, if you're here live, go ahead and comment live. If you're watching the replay, you can go ahead and comment replay as well. I'd love to hear from you and have you share a little background about yourself. So thank you once again for those of you who are joining live or catching this on a replay. And um, what I want to do is I encourage you to put your questions in the comments as well. Um, they will be answered um, with my team during the session as well as afterwards. So any questions that you come across, feel free to go ahead and post them in the chat in the comments of this live session. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. But first, let me give you a little background about myself. I'm excited to join uh, for you joining me today and to share what I have in store for you guys. Um, as far as my background, I've been in the industry 21 years. I'm a CPA and enrolled agent and have a master's in tax. And I'm based here in New York, but I do have a virtual practice. So I work with clients all over. And I help six-figure mental health practice owners reduce their tax liability with my three-step entity analysis. And so today we're gonna go a little bit into detail about that three-step entity analysis, analysis and show you a couple of um, screen shares here that I have to share with you. And um, if it makes some sense to you, you definitely wanna connect with me afterwards, check out the comments for a link to an intake form where we can go through a few qualifying questions to see if this is a good fit uh, for your practice. And then from there, we will arrange a time to call. You'll get a special VIP link to schedule a call with me. And so we're going to jump right into the first section. So the three-step into analysis, the first step includes a bookkeeping diagnostic. Now, that doesn't sound fun, but let me go ahead and explain what that is. Number one, you have to have a bookkeeping system in place, primarily QuickBooks Online we support, as well as Zero. The purpose of having that bookkeeping system is that ideally it leads to your taxes, which determine how much you pay or how much you get back, if that's the case, right? So if your bookkeeping records are not in order, if you don't have a business account, if you're commingling funds, let's take a break and get that situated first before we go into any analysis, okay? So if you do have a bookkeeping system, we're going to look into it and take a look and see, is it properly set up? Is it customized for your practice or is it just the cookie cutter, you know, software you get when you subscribe? Are all of your accounts connected and are they business accounts, right? Um, if you've set up bookkeeping on your own without the help of a professional and you have not gone to school for that accounting or bookkeeping, it is likely that your um, system may not be properly set up or it may not be customized for your practice. Um, it's important that if you have an entity, especially that your bookkeeping records only contain business accounts, business activity, and there's no commingling occurring, okay? Do you have proper account types? And I'm going to share my screen shortly and kind of give you an idea of what I mean by that. But in general, in bookkeeping and accounting, you have um, five main types, account types, assets, liabilities, equity accounts, income and accounts, and expense accounts. Now, when you get the software, there's going to be amazing tutorials. But if you don't know the the under um, the theory, and if you don't have an understanding of what those concepts are, it's going to be very difficult to properly categorize the transactions coming in from your bank and credit cards because you may just pick a name that looks good, but if it's the wrong entity um, account type, that can affect your books. You can end up overpaying taxes just because you picked the wrong account type if you set up a new account, and I see it all the time. Okay, I've seen twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollar errors in your income because your account types were not correct in the bookkeeping process. So bookkeeping is not just about categorizing transactions. You have to have the underlying knowledge behind 
what's going on, okay? <clears throat> Customized chart of accounts. When you go into uh, these bookkeeping platforms, they may have 150 different accounts set up and you probably need maybe 40. So you're constantly looking at all these extra accounts and picking random things. Um, and it may not be a best fit. So your, your bookkeeping should be customized for your practice. Maybe you have multiple service offices, multiple niche areas that you service. Maybe you provide consulting and supervision in addition to, you know, therapy. And so it would be ideal to track income and expenses from each of those service offerings so that you could see how profitable each one is independently. If your bookkeeping set up properly and, and utilizing you know the tools available those are things that could be looked at so you know going forward i'm losing money in this area i'm, I'm you know doing well in this area do you have any negative accounts you know um sometime i get reports and the, the bank account is negative thirty thousand dollars if that's the case i don't know what kind of bank you have but it's likely not correct right or the credit card shows a negative balance um and so these are things that are going to be looked at. And, and at the end of the day, since your taxes come from your bookkeeping records, if your bookkeeping records are not um, on track, if they have these type of errors, your taxes are likely not correct. In the event of an audit, just know that the IRS can request access to your bookkeeping platform and see on the back end what's going on. So you want to make sure everything is you know, in tip top shape your reports actually max your tax return. If not, you can explain any discrepancies. Have your books been properly closed after the period is done so that there, no, there are no changes in the future. Maybe my mistake or on purpose, I've seen that too. I get a set of books to do a diagnostic. I'll look at the tax return and the numbers are completely different, right? That's just screaming red flag, <laughs> all right? And I'm also looking at your books from a tax perspective. So there's there are those who just do bookkeeping and there's nothing wrong with that, but they may not have you know the more detailed experience in accounting and tax. And so they're just categorizing based on the right types, but not really analyzing the accounts, not really understanding the rules for your specific entity type. For example, if I get a set of books and I see a vehicle on the balance sheet and your entity is an S corp for tax purposes, we got to ask some questions about that vehicle and determine should it really be a part of your bookkeeping? Do you have the proper paperwork and legalities in place for that to be a business vehicle? If not, it doesn't belong there and we need to reclass some things. Um, are there certain expenses for your home being paid directly from the business? In certain entity types, that should not occur. Um, and if, it's, if it does occur, it should be in certain places in the um, financials. So understanding the tax perspective and kind of bringing that into the books um, is definitely an advantage because you're not going to have a bunch of adjustments going on in the middle of tax season because we could make those changes throughout the year okay and um, so that's that's kind of a brief overview of the bookkeeping diagnostic of course there's a lot more that goes into that after it's complete we will actually meet with you you know via zoom go over the findings go over the things that um, we discovered and then take it from there. Now, if you're managing your books on your own, um, nothing wrong with that if you're doing a great job. But I, I recommend you get a second look. And if some cleanup is needed and some guidance is needed, great. Um, it, it may be also um, best for you just to have it outsourced and uh, have someone do the bookkeeping for you. And that's something that we can do as well. Okay. Now let's talk about step two of the um, three-step entity analysis, and that is the um, entity analysis itself. So entity type, let's talk about that for a minute. You're in practice, you could just be a sole proprietor doing business under your own name. Um, you could have established an LLC or a PLLC, depending on the state you're in and their requirements. You may have a corporation. You may have made an S election for your LLC or your corporation and your tax as an S corp. We're going to look at all that in terms of the paperwork and then ensure the tax returns that you're filing match that paperwork and those elections. Um, I've come across a lot of times where um, business owners are maybe fairly new or not even new and they just didn't know what their actual entity type was and what filings that should have occurred because of that. And it had to be corrected and then um, amendments had to be filed. So are you filing the right tax returns for your entity type? And then once that's um, confirmed, do your books match your tax returns? And then also, let's take a look at your current structure. Maybe you are an LLC and maybe you're deciding, should I be an S Corp for tax purposes? So let's do that analysis. Let's look at what your tax return will look like remaining as an LLC using your last filed return. And then let's look at a comparison of what it would look like as a um, S Corporation. 
Okay. So I'm going to share some things at the end here to kind of give you a visual of, of, uh, of some reports that we provide you in terms of S corporations. One thing that's really important with S corporations is that you have a reasonable compensation in place, meaning you are now going to be an employee of your corporation and you need to be paying yourself a reasonable salary. What is that reasonable number? You really shouldn't just pick it out of a hat. You really should go through an analysis to determine if that is a proper um, salary for your position. And I'll say positions plural because you're likely have multiple roles in your practice. And we're going to go through an example of that process. And so we're going to use that reasonable compensation to determine what your tax would look like if you're not currently an S-Corp and see if it's beneficial to you. There are some times I've come across where S-Corp costs someone more money to maintain because the profit in their business wasn't sufficient to maintain an S-Corporation and the reasonable compensation. And then there's also the C-Corp. If you happen to be a C-Corp structure, we'll discuss why that is and if it's a good fit for you in general. But you also are required to have salary with a C-Corp and then there's a C-Corp reasonable compensation as well, okay? So we wanna determine is your entity structure the best for tax purposes for your specific situation? Because there's no magic number of when you should be an S-Corp. There's no magic number of when you should set up an LLC. <clears throat> if you're a sole proprietor, your tax benefits are very identical to having an LLC. The only difference would be is if you're looking to make an S-Corp election. You can't do that if you're a sole proprietor. You would need to have an entity such as an LLC or corporation first. So a lot of people say, oh, I'm going to set up an LLC to get more tax benefits. Not necessarily, okay? If you're a sole proprietor doing business under your own name, you have tax benefits and you want to definitely make sure they are being maximized. And once again, that goes back to your bookkeeping and then also just having that oversight. And then last step of the three-step process is the tax profile. You know, we're going to review your filing status, single, married. Do you file jointly or separately? What may be a better fit for you? Depends, right? Um, do you have a proper tax returns file for your entity type? Uh, can we identify any missing um, deductions or any errors? You know, once again, we're looking at the bookkeeping across the board. So how did that transition? Are there errors in the bookkeeper that then translated to the return, which could have cost you more money? Or you could be underpaying taxes, which we also want to catch before the IRS does, okay? Um, and does your tax return match your bookkeeping records? Um, also, you know, more importantly, if you're in a six-figure range, now we want to start looking at some potential tax planning strategies. Um, you know, have you maximized, you know, retirement saving options? Are you taking advantage of home office and vehicle? And are you properly doing that for your entity type? These are the things we're going to look at in doing and reviewing your tax profile and prior tax returns. Okay. So let me show you, you know, one or two things here. I'm going to just pull up a sample file um, for QuickBooks. So it's not going to really be customized, but just to give you an idea of what you're, what I was referring to in terms of the account types. So this is QuickBooks Online, sample company, and this is called your chart of accounts. This list pretty much determines um, for the transactions that are coming in, um, where do they belong? You know, what type of transaction it is, where does it belong? This then turns into your um, financial reports, such as your balance sheet and profit and loss, and those are used for your tax return. Okay, so we have, you know, assets um, up here. We have liabilities. Uh, we have fixed assets in terms of vehicles, computers, things of that nature, liabilities, short term, long term. And then we have your income categories and your expenses. And so this list is pretty reasonable, you know, but with new accounts, they usually kind of start at 150 of all these different account types and it becomes very confusing. So if you create a new account and you don't know the proper entity, account type for that account, you know, the default, you know, you may just pick income and not know that you're adding an expense category or oftentimes I'll see you add it, add it as an asset and it's added as uncategorized asset and then you create the name and, and so on. And so when you create those accounts improperly, then when you go to categorize something that may be income or that may be an expense in those incorrect categories, your financial reports are going to be off. Okay, so this you know goes goes back to that accounting one on one bookkeeping knowledge, understanding these account types, assets, fixed assets, liabilities, and so on, and where things properly should show up. So ideally, your reports 
um, are used for taxes. So at the end of the day, when all your bookkeeping and transactions have been categorized for the year, this report, your profit and loss report, is going to lead to your tax return. So we want to be sure there's no negative amounts on here that shouldn't be negative. Um, there's nothing being overstated. There's nothing missing. Have your bank accounts been reconciled to ensure there's no missing transactions. Um, you know, there's oftentimes I come across where transactions, um, I see some transactions, but the account that the transactions relate to is missing. So everything wasn't added. Um, and so that's the P&L. That's the main report that leads to your taxes to determine how much taxes you pay. The balance sheet report is very important as well. This report really shows the history of your business. So this balance sheet report is a cumulative report from inception till now. So from whenever you started your business or whenever you started your bookkeeping, it will reflect certain numbers and they will carry over from year to year. For example, your equity section is going to be a cumulative total of equity. So do you have, how many bank accounts do you have? Um, what kind of assets do you, does your business actually own? Um, whether it be equipment, computers, or if there's a vehicle involved. What credit cards do you have? What loans do you have? What interest rate is on those loans? And is it being properly split between principal and interest? And then in terms of equity, depending on your entity type, if you're an LLC with multiple members, well, there should be multiple equity accounts for each member and tracking how much has each member has put in and how much each member has taken out. And if you're an S Corp shareholder, your distributions should be tracked. So these are the things that are looked at for, um, in doing your bookkeeping diagnostic. And so I wanted to go ahead and share that with you. There's a lot going on in QuickBooks Online. This is not what I'm going to cover today, but I just wanted to give you an idea of the reports that we look at and how errors could be made, especially if you're managing it on your own. If, you're, if you have a bookkeeper, no worries. Um, you know, I work alongside with a lot of bookkeepers to ensure for tax purposes and, and for accounting rule purposes that um, things are being properly done. All right. So that's a little bit about bookkeeping. Let's pop into the sample report for S Corporation reasonable compensation. This is something that would be provided to you with the entity analysis where we're gonna determine if you're currently an S Corp, maybe you have never done the analysis to determine what your reasonable compensation would be. So it would be beneficial to have that. And then let's look at what your taxes would look, taxes would look like if you did implement your proper reasonable compensation. Or if you're an LLC and you wanna consider transitioning, let's see what that would look like. So let me go ahead and share that all right <clears throat> so in doing the reasonable compensation analysis we're going to go through a few interview questions to determine what type of tasks you perform in your business because it's if you're running your practice you're probably not just providing therapy right um or psychiatric services so you may be running you know working in your business still but you also may be having you know, some human resource related work, a little bit of finance and accounting or, you know, billing, you know, if you use a platform like Simple Practice, you know, are you doing that or do you have someone else? Do you have to oversee it? Um, marketing your, your practice and then administrative duties, you know, onboarding and things like that. Either you're doing or you have someone else doing it and you may have to manage them. What county are you located in? What state are you in? And then how many hours are you part-time or full-time in your practice? Those things are all a factor in how much you should um, be paying yourself. And so we're going to look at those different pieces of time, whatever your percentages are, depending on how many hours you work per week. Those are the things we're going to look at. In this example, it turned out that 105K for um, a psychologist, I believe, is what I run this for. So let's go to the let's go to more detail here. So this report was run for a clinical psychologist and we broke down <clears throat> the various hours being performed in all these different categories. So your administrative work should have a salary that's lower than your clinical psychology work, of course, right? Your market research in terms of marketing, same thing. So your salary is going to be broken out based on the time you're putting in on average to determine what your reasonable compensation should be. So then in this case, only 41% of the hours was actual clinical psychology work. And so this is the type of report you would receive along with some, you know, detailed information about um, reasonable compensation and, and the rules. What the IRS is looking for, what happens if 
you are not paying yourself that reasonable compensation number is the IRS can come in and say, well, you've taken cash out or you've taken distributions out of the business, but you haven't met your reasonable compensation number yet. And so we're going to reclass those distributions to salary, to payroll, and now you're going to owe late payroll taxes penalties and interest. So very, very important that you have that in place. Um, and if you are considering an S Corp, this analysis is important because you want to know, do you have enough profit in your business to even sustain what your reasonable compensation would be? Okay, so I don't want to get too detailed into the technicalities today, but I do want to just recap these three step into the analysis. The purpose is purpose of it is to decrease your tax liability um, so that you're not overpaying on taxes and you know identify some strategies that may apply to you. We're going to look at your bookkeeping um, software, preferably QuickBooks Online or Xero to identify those things I mentioned. We're going to look at your entity type and then we're going to also look at your tax profile. Now just to clarify who this is for, this package, the special promotional package is for established practices who have a bookkeeping platform in place already, whether it be QuickBooks Online, preferably, or Zero, And uh, we can then perform the three steps on what you have in place already and, you know, prior tax return that has been filed. It is not for startups because if you're a startup, you don't, you may not be at six figures yet. Um, you may not have your bookkeeping in place yet. And you can message me separately if you are in that phase and you want to get things properly aligned so that you can grow to six figures and have everything in place and not be a hot mess. So definitely feel free to connect with me separately on that. But this three-step entity analysis package is specifically for those six-figure practices who do have those things in place already. All right, so I hope that helped. Go ahead and continue to drop comments or questions in the um, chat, um, the Facebook Live post here today. Or if you're here on Clubhouse, you can put them in the Clubhouse chat as well. And um, what I want to recommend that we do going forward is if you are open to getting this um, three-step entity analysis done, if you feel like it's beneficial, if you want to make sure you're not overpaying on taxes, or if you're overwhelmed with your taxes and you want to figure out what's going on, my recommendation is that you grab a time on my calendar. What I'm going to do is post in the comment below an intake form that will go through a few qualifying questions to determine if this program is a good fit for you. And if so, you'll be uh, led to my VIP calendar link with some special availability specifically for this three-step into the analysis package. Um, it is going to be a limited amount of clients I am taking on at this time because I want to make sure they get the proper level of service and quality support that is needed to see this all the way through. So definitely um, grab that time, you know, sooner than later, um, I will have a couple of slots open at the moment. So definitely grab that link in the comments below. If you don't fall into, you know, the criteria for this package at this time, feel free to DM me and we can connect and discuss what other resources that um, may be available for you or what other packages may be a better fit. But um, we're in the middle of 2023 at this time. And so um, almost in the middle is May, June to be here before you know it. And so we want to get ahead of this now. If you didn't have a great experience this past tax season, or if you're still catching up and filing 2022 taxes, let's get ahead of 2023 now because there are still things that can be put in place before year end that can still help you to um, minimize your taxes. It's very difficult and almost impossible to minimize your taxes after the year is complete, right? Once you get your tax return, what can be done? Not much, right? Now is the time to be proactive. Go ahead and grab that link, go through the qualifying questions. Let's see if it's a good fit. And I look forward to working with you. All right. I hope this was helpful and give you a basic overview of the three-step entity analysis and how to decrease your tax liability. Once again, I'm Safi Russell, founder and CEO of SDR Consulting Inc. Feel free to connect with me by DM comment below with questions. I'll continue to answer them after this live session, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. Thanks again for joining me. Take care. Bye-bye.